Hello, welcome to our channel. In this video, we will talk about linear equations and we will look at some examples of solving linear equations. Okay, first of all, let's define what we mean by linear equations. Basically, a linear equation in one variable x is any equation of this form, ax plus b equals zero. And it may be written in a different form, such as ax plus b equals c, but we can again write it in the form ax plus b equals zero because we can always move that to the left side by subtracting c from both sides. So this is the standard form of linear equations and a and b can be any real numbers. If we look at this equation, the exponent of x is always one in a linear equation, the exponent of x is always one. So based on that, let's decide which of these are linear equations. The first one, here the exponent of x is definitely one. This is a linear equation. In the second one, this term is fine. We have exponent one. This term is fine. We have exponent one. But here we have exponent two. We have x squared. So this is not a linear equation. If you look at the third one, we have x in the denominator here. So this can actually be written as negative two x to negative one. So that means this is not a linear equation because we have negative one for exponent of x instead of one. And over here, although we have fraction coefficients, x still has exponent one. So this is also a linear equation. So basically to decide if an equation is linear equation or not, all we need to see is the exponent of x. If exponent of x is one, then it's a linear equation. Otherwise, it, it's not a linear equation. Now let's look at how we can solve linear equations. So solving linear equation basically involves isolating x on one side by usual adding and multiplying numbers to both sides of the equation. So let's look at some examples. Here is our first example. We have negative 3x plus 2 equals 10. Our goal here is to isolate x on one side. So first we want to try to have the term containing x on the left side. For that, we need to get rid of these two from the left side. So we just subtract two from both sides. Then we'll have negative three x plus two minus two, which is negative three x on this side. And on the right side, we have 10 minus two, which is eight. So we have just a negative three X on the left side now, but our goal is to have just X on the left side. For that, we can divide both sides by negative three. If you divide both sides by negative three, the left side becomes just X and the right side is negative eight by three. So this is the solution. The value of X must be negative eight by three. And if you want to make sure you did this correctly, you can check your solution. So when you plug in negative eight by three for X, then this equation must be satisfied. So you must have negative three X plus two. We must get that to be 10 because we have 10 on the right side here. So negative three times negative eight by three will be simply eight because this three and that three will get canceled out and negative and negative, we get positive and we have eight here, plus two. Eight plus two is definitely 10. So that means the given equation is satisfied by negative eight by three. And this is a good solution. Okay, let's look at the next example. Here we have 20 minus 16 X equals negative 10. Again, our goal is to have just X on the left side. So we can start by subtracting 20 from both sides. On the left side, we have 20 minus 16 X minus 20. So 20 minus 20 goes away. We are left with negative 16 X. And on the right side, we have negative 10 minus 20. So negative 30 on the right side. So we have negative 16 X equals negative 30. Next, we can divide both sides by negative 16 so that we have just X here. 
So negative 16 x by negative 16, negative 16 gets canceled out. You are left with just x here. Negative 30 by negative 16, then you are left with 30 by 16. And you can simplify this little further. You can divide top and bottom by two. You get 15 by eight. So this is the solution. So x equals 15 by eight is the solution. And again, like with the last example, you can plug this in the given equation and check your solution. This is our next example. Here we want to solve for A. This sum looks a little bit more complicated than the previous ones, mainly because we have parentheses here. So whenever you have that, the first step is to try to simplify the given expressions. So we can distribute this 12, 12a minus 24, because 12 times negative two would be negative 24, equals 14 minus 4a. So this is what we get. Now we want to have all a terms on the left side. So for that, we can add 4a to both sides. So that this negative 4a goes away. Then we get 12a plus 4a, 16a minus 24, and on the right side, we are left with just 14. Next, we want to get rid of 24 from the left side. So we can add 24 to both sides. And that will give us 16a, because negative 24 plus 24 goes away, equals 14 plus 24, which is 38. So I'm, I'm going to write that up here. 16a equals 38 is what we got so far. Now the last step, we just need to divide both sides by 16 so that we get rid of this 16 from here. So divide both sides by 16, we get a equals 38 by 16 and which we can simplify by dividing top and bottom by two. So when you divide 38 by two, we get 19. Divide 16 by two, we get eight. So the solution is 19 by eight. This is the solution. So we are done with this example. This is the next example we have. So we have two by five X plus two equals 11. So whenever you see a fraction like this one, the first step would be to get rid of the denominator. So we have five in the denominator here, then we can get rid of that by multiplying both sides by five. So if you multiply both sides by five, we have five times two by five X, which will be two X, five times two, which is 10. So we need to distribute that five equals 55 on the right side, 11 times five is 55. So now we don't have any fraction left. So we have a nice equation. Then we can subtract 10 from both sides to get rid of this 10. So we get two X on the left side equals 45. Then we can divide both sides by two. So on the left side, we get just X. On the right side, we have 45 by two. This is the solution. X is 45 by two. All right, so we are done with this example. Let's look at the next one now. So we have three by eight X plus five equals two by five. So we have two numbers in the denominator. We have eight here and we have five here. We want to get rid of both of those we can get rid of one of them at a time. So to get rid of this eight, we can multiply both sides by eight and see what that gives us. So eight times three by eight X is simply three X because eight by eight is one, of course, plus eight times five is 40. So we get that on the left side. On the right side, we have two times eight which is 16 by five in the denominator. 
So we got rid of eight from the denominator. Now we need to get rid of this five from the denominator. So for that, we just multiply both sides by five again. Then we get five times three X is 15 X plus five times 40 is 200. And on this side, we have just 16 left because we have 16 by five times five. So five and five gets canceled out. So we have 16 left. Now next we can remove this 200 by subtracting 200 from both sides. So that will give us 15 X equals negative 184. 16 minus 200 would be negative 184. And the last step would be to divide both sides by 15. So let me just copy that equation up here. So the last step is just to divide both sides by 15. Then we get 15 X over 15 is X. So negative 184 by 15. So this is the solution. X is negative 184 by 15. So we are done with this example. And this is all I have put together for this video. Thank you for watching and see you in my next videos.